So you've gotten some inkling, and this big and perhaps controversial idea about trust evaporating, not just towards authority, but trust evaporating in general. And we can perhaps contrast that with the stories that Fiona shared about people working quite collaboratively to share resources, including information as a resource. So that's something for us to come back to. Uh, we are here in the Annenberg School uh, for Communication and Journalism, and we're going next to the Chinese University of Hong Kong School of Journalism and Communication. The director there of the school is Professor Francis Lee, and he'll be speaking to us. He's worked extensively on the interaction between media and social movements protests especially. He's the author or editor of a couple of books on the 2014 demonstrations, the so-called Umbrella Mo uh, Movement. But he's also undertaken a number of surveys, and his presentation now will focus on some of the surveys that he and his team have conducted, and during the discussion, we can come back to some media issues. Professor Francis Lee, won't you welcome him via video conference. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, so today my presentation will be focusing on public opinion, op opinion in Hong Kong regarding the extradition bill and regarding the anti-extradition bill protests. Uh, we believe that understanding public opinion is very important because the movement has been going on for three months and uh, up, to this, uh, up to this point, the movement is still supported, uh, receiving a lot of uh, public backing. So uh, understanding the um, public opinion about uh, the issue is actually one of the keys to understand and the sustainability of the protest and also some of the characteristics of the protest. Um, so basically what I'm going to do today is to um, present some of the basic findings from a series of surveys conducted by our survey center over the past three months. So in the first slide, it's just basic information about the four surveys that we have conducted. Uh, the first survey was conducted uh, in late May to early June. That was actually right before the first uh, large scale protest on June 9th. Um, the second survey was conducted in June, uh, in mid-June, right after the government announced the suspension of the revision of the extradition bill. And then the third survey was conducted in August, and then the fourth survey was just completed in early September. Now, in the first wave uh, of the survey series, obviously, at that time, we were interested in how the public was thinking about the extradition bill itself, the revision of the fugitive ordinance itself. And so wave one contains several questions that directly address public opinion about the issue. So on the next slide, we see that in well, one of the questions we asked in wave one was, do you simply do you support or oppose the government's suggested revision of the fugitive ordinance? Uh, we can see that about 24% uh, said they would uh, they quite supported or strongly supported the revision of the extradition uh, of the extradition bill, and uh, about 47% uh, they said they opposed it, quite opposed or strongly opposed it to the revision of the fugitive ordinance. So we can see that from our survey, we can see that the um, majority of the Hong Kong public was indeed against, uh, quite strongly against the revision of the fugitive ordinance. And in the same survey, we also asked a couple of uh, additional questions. So on the next slide, uh, we say after the revision of the fugitive ordinance, the Hong Kong court has the ability to serve as a gatekeeper. Do you agree with this statement or not? Uh, we can see that about 33% of the Hong Kong public agreed with the statement and about 39% of Hong Kong public disagreed with the statement. So basically the percentage of Hong Kong people agreeing or disagreeing with the argument that after the, uh, if the, the revision of the extradition bill was passed, um, the Hong Kong court could serve as an effective uh, gatekeeper to prevent a uh, 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 wrongful extradition. Um, the, actually, the percentage of people agreeing or disagreeing with this view was kind of more or less similar. So there was no very strong trust toward the Hong Kong court system, but also no very strong distrust toward the Hong Kong court system. But then the next slide, okay, after the revision of the fugitive ordinance, the suspects who are extradited to China from Hong Kong could receive a fair trial in the mainland. Do you agree with the statement or not? Uh, only 15% of the Hong Kong public agreed with the statement and up to 60%, close to 60% of the Hong Kong public disagreed with the statement. So we can see here that there was a very clearly a strong distrust 
toward the legal system. So basically what we see from wave one of our survey series is that Hong Kong public was uh, strongly against the revision of the extradition bill and one of the most important reasons why the Hong Kong public was very much against it was uh, the deep distrust toward the mainland legal system. Now of course in mid-June the Hong Kong government has uh, announced the, sus the suspension of the extradition bill but uh, the movement did not stop because uh, by that time there were already you know some other additional demands emerging. So in wave two, wave three, and wave four, as we can see in the next slide, uh, we asked questions about you know whether the public thinks that the government, in addition to suspending the bill, whether the government should do something else. Uh, so for example, in wave two, 70% uh, of the Hong Kong public uh, thought that um, the government should completely withdraw the bill. Uh, also about 72% uh, of the public uh, think, thought that the government should withdraw the real definition of the clash, the police protest clash on June 12th. 74% uh, of the Hong Kong public at that time uh, thought that the government should investigate into the police use of violent, uh, use of excessive force, basically also on the uh, during the clash on June 12. 52% uh, of the Hong Kong public at that time thought that uh, the chief executive Carol Lam should resign. One very important thing about um, public demands, additional demands regarding the government is that over time, um, police violence or police uh, abuse of power has become uh, actually arguably the core concern among the Hong Kong public. And that was in relation to not just the uh, police protest that clashed on June 12, as uh, things evolved, as uh, protests escalated in the past two to three months, um, there were actually numerous uh, other occasions and key incidents um, during which uh, the police was uh, perceived as uh, using very uh, excessive uh, uh, force and also uh, not really following the kind of norms and rules and regulations that they should have followed. So so over time, the police uh, uh, was really uh, becoming uh, one of the main targets of uh, 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 of the protest, and so that in actually in. Um wave three and wave four, that is in the August survey and in the September survey, we asked uh, questions uh, about whether the Hong Kong public perceived that the protesters and the police have used excessive force because uh, over time, uh, as a matter of fact, um, the level of violence, the level of conflicts have escalated uh, and the level of violence exercised by both sides have arguably uh, increased. But as we can see from the finding on the next slide, um, in wave three, uh, only about 40% of the Hong Kong public uh, thought that the protesters have used excessive force. Um, but in contrast, 67% of the Hong Kong public thought that the police uh, have used excessive force. One month later, uh, as uh, the protests further escalated and uh, in early September, interestingly still, only 40% of the Hong Kong public thought that the protesters have used excessive force, uh, whereas the percentage of Hong Kong public uh, uh, thinking that the police have used excessive force has actually risen a little bit from 67% to 71%. So um, basically, you know, uh, uh, as we can see here over um, the past three months, um, Hong Kong people actually uh, thought that, you know, of course, you know, some quite a proportion of Hong Kong people, 40%, thought that the, uh, um, the protesters have indeed used excessive force, but an even larger proportion, a much larger proportion of Hong Kong public was thinking that uh, the police have used excessive force. And what we have seen in this process uh, is uh, basically what we can argue is a, is a trend of radicalization. That is, the Hong Kong public has seemingly becoming more receptive or uh, 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 understanding to what protesters use of physical force or even uh, uh, violence. Uh, in fact, in wave four, that is in the September survey on the next slide, uh, uh, it shows that in, a, in wave four, we actually asked the question, do you agree that, uh, quote, when the government does not respond to large scale peaceful protests, it is understandable that protesters would have radical actions, unquote, uh, whether the Hong Kong public agreed with this particular statement, uh, with this particular idea. Uh, as you can see from the findings, 55% uh, um, of the Hong Kong public strongly agreed or quite agreed with the statement. They actually uh, thought that when the government does not respond to large scale peaceful protests, it is understandable that protesters would have radical actions. Um, only about 27% uh, of the Hong Kong public disagree with this statement. So we, what we can see here is, is a kind of what we might call conditional radicalization. Uh, the Hong Kong public um, started to agree with 
or becoming more receptive or, or, or regarding uh, the protesters use of violence but with a very important condition the condition is the government has not listened to peaceful protests um, so that in the same uh, uh, survey September survey on the next slide we also asked the question uh, who is to blame for the escalation of violent conflicts in Hong Kong uh, as we can see from the findings 54.5 percent of the Hong Kong public thought that the Hong Kong SAR government was to blame about 18 percent thought that central government was to blame Blame. about 18% uh, uh, thought the police has to blame, about 5% thought the pro-establishment, pro-government legislators were to blame, uh, whereas only 13% uh, of the Hong Kong public thought that the protesters were to blame, about 10% thought the pro-democracy legislators were to blame, and about 12% uh, thought foreign powers were to blame. So uh, to uh, very quickly conclude, um, the protests are not stopping because the movement um, is no longer focusing only on the original issue of the extradition bill. Uh, over time, it has become a movement with a what I can say a short-term goal and a long-term goal. The short-term goal is to demand responses on the issue of police violence and abuse of power. Um, and the long-term goal is to address the fundamental structural issue that has caused the responsiveness of the government to public opinion in the first place, which basically is the demand for uh, genuine popular election and democratization. So um, this is uh, the current status of uh, the movement and also public opinion toward the movement. Uh, my presentation ends here. Thanks a lot.